So the next thing I want to look at is some of the top jobs to look for when you're leaving the help desk or when you're trying to move up from the help desk. So the first job is none other than networking. So this is where you want to look for those network admin, network technician positions, because in a networking, from a networking standpoint, those are going to be the entry level networking roles. So I'm not saying it's the entry level IT roles, but it's the entry level role to get into networking. So coming from the help desk, like I said, you've already kind of went through doing some troubleshooting, some basic network troubleshooting. So a lot of times it's it's not uncommon to see someone come from a help desk role for a couple of months or a couple of years and then go to a networking role. And one of the things I think that can help prepare someone to make this jump or to make this transition is, for one thing, if you're making it from within the organization you was at the help desk at, a lot of times you got the experience of knowing that organization. So you know your way around that organization. So it won't be no issue for you to learn where the networking closets is at. So that uh, you have a lot going for you coming from the help desk, moving up from within. And like I said, with these networking roles, one, one of the things, another thing I would look at or another thing I would try to pursue is that CCNA certification. So like I said, the CCNA is going to prepare you for any of these roles. And like I said, it, it makes a good transition going from that help desk to that networking role especially when you're going from the same organization because you already kind of know some, know some things about that organization. You know where things is located. You know where the buildings is at. But like I said, that CCNA, I think it'll make it happen uh, to make this transition a much much smoother. So you can't get it without this certification. I've seen places where, you know, they move you up and then you have to get the certification within a year. All of that is going to greatly depend on the organization. So the next role that the help desk prepares you for, this is an application analyst or application engineer, depending on what the organization calls it. I'm used to calling it application analyst or app, apps analyst. A lot of times in this position is basically you're supporting the applications that your company uses. So often resort back to healthcare. So at healthcare, a lot of times, you know, one system that's big in healthcare is uh, Epic. So, you know, you have where most hospital systems, they're using Epic. So to support those Epic systems are the different uh, caveats in Epic. You have Epic Analyst, uh, which would be also an application analyst, depending on where you at. So like I said, the application analyst, they support the applications that the company uses. And most of the time, this person is usually somewhat of a, a go-between. So basically, if the user is having an issue on the floor, they have an analyst that they report that issue to, and then the analyst tries to fix that issue. So the analyst may have to pull in other resources from the IT department to fix that issue. Let's say that if it's an application on a server. So the analyst may be responsible for making sure it's not that application on that server. And then if they decide that, okay, there's something going on with the server itself, then they may have to pull in a server resource. So at this position, like I said, you, you kind of being the, the go-between from the users on the floor and the other departments within the IT or within your IT organization. But like I said, this is one of the roles where I've seen plenty of people come from a help desk and move up to an analyst position. Uh, but like I said, because at help desk, you're working with those applications also. You're not going in deep detail with those applications because if it's something out of the basic troubleshooting, you're sending it to this apps analyst. So application analyst roles, this is something that I would look at coming from a help desk or coming from anything uh, lower than this apps role, like a help desk or maybe even desktop would be a good transition to go to apps analyst. So the next position that the help desk prepares you for is the system admin. So basically, these roles usually maintain the server environment. You know, sometimes that server environment may be virtualized or you may still have some physical servers on your network. But a lot of times, the server admin, they're responsible for that server infrastructure, that server environment. So this is where, like I said, you could be building servers, troubleshooting servers. Um, anything that has to do with a server usually falls up under this group. Also, Active Directory and things like that fall up under this group also, or Microsoft or Office 365. A lot of times, that goes to the server group. So like I said, this server group, it goes in the same order as with networking as to the tiered jobs where you have a server admin, which would usually be the first level. Then from there, you may have a server engineer. Then it goes to a server senior engineer and so forth. So like I said, different 
organizations may call it different things, but it kind of goes and those even even at any organization is still going to go at those levels. But like I said, this is a good position coming from the help desk. I've seen plenty of people make this transition also, especially coming from desktop too. So a lot of times desktop, if you think about it, at that desktop position, you're troubleshooting with smaller PCs. Then you move to that server position and you're troubleshooting servers. So in a way, that's a good natural transition also, where a lot of times if someone works desktop for a couple of years, a lot of times they're well prepared to move to the server admin to where they start supporting the server environment. So some of the certifications that could help you out in this transition, uh, a lot of your virtualization certs. I know VMware used to be, uh, uh, vSphere used to be one of the big certs, uh, some Linux certs. Also, uh, any kind of cloud certs. So all of this could help you out to get you into this server admin position. And then the last position I want to point out that working at the help desk prepares you for is a lot of your security positions. So it's not, not uncommon to see someone go from help desk to a security analyst or a security admin. So a lot of times, like I said, this is a natural transition also because you already know the organization. You're already familiar with a lot of the applications. It's just about making that transition to this security team. A lot of times the certification that can help you make that transition for, to the, from help desk to security would definitely be the security plus. Like I said, that's usually the first certification for security that most people go after. Of. And like I said, it help, it's, it's worth its weight, you know, saying it's, it's um, a well-respected certification. Then from there, you know, I would always say that if you, once you get there, you get that certification, you get in on that security team. If you decide that you want to pivot to something else in security, that's when you start looking at or reaching out or doing your research on those certifications. So if you get to, to the security team and you decide you want to manage firewalls, this is where you may start going down that Palo, Palo Alto route or that Fortinet route to start researching or learning some things about some firewalls. But Coming from the help desk, like I said, it was, will prepare you to make this transition from help desk to cybersecurity. So as you can see, the help desk opens up a lot of doors for you. One of the main goals while you're working the help desk is to figure out what route or what position you can see yourself doing and then starting to prepare for when a, a role becomes available or when one of those jobs become available or if your company expands and some more roles become available. You want to already be prepared for it because that way, when that opening comes, you're already prepared. If there's a certification you need, you already have that certification. And then an uh, added benefit of being in the same organization as the position you're trying to move up to is something that you hear me talk about sometimes called job shadowing. This is basically where you reach out to the manager of that department and tell them that you're interested and you want to know if you could shadow to see what they do in a on a typical day. So a lot of times, like I said, you could you would have to do it on a day or a day when you're not working your regular shift. But basically, you come in and you shadow with someone in that department or you shadow with multiple people in that department and you kind of get a gist of what they do on a daily basis. And sometimes while you're shadowing, you may even get a chance to get your hands dirty by help resolving some issues or help troubleshooting some issues. That way, when that position becomes available and you've been shadowing for months with this department, a lot of times it's a no brainer. They're going to automatically go ahead and hire you because you already kind of have the training for it because you done been shadowing with them. You kind of know the aspects of the job. They just have to train you a little bit more. So like I said, this is one of those things coming from the help desk that I think uh, helps out folks a lot because, like I said, you're able to maneuver around, you're able to learn the organization, and then, like I said, if you're able to job shadow, a lot of times that's a game changer. So if you're currently at the help desk, let me know in the comments what's your next move or what's the next position you're going for. And also let me know if there's any certifications that you need to get in order to get that position.